for $100. Put your pledge on Visa, MasterCard, American Express, or Discover. Whatever you do, however you do it, please let's hear from you. And you can also go online at www.wpfwfm.org. I'm Gloria Minot, Askia Mohammed, as 2.55 p.m. headlines. Askiya Muhammad, and you're tuned to member-supported WPFW Washington. Go, Mary, in the bag, tied around my neck for my protection. Yes, yes, this is for salad. This is for salad. We're excited. This is Dr. Theodore Watkins. And, you know, the last hour, we really focused in on the program from for from the vault. But this hour, we're officially doing uh, to your health. And so we got to start all over again, y'all. <laughs> and we got to get some money now. I, I want to thank Mark and, and two anonymous Marcus from uh, Kevin John and, and two anonymous, uh, individuals, one from New, uh, DC and one from, I don't know why I want to say New York. Somebody from New York need to call in today. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> and, 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 and Greenbelt to, to help us to go, um, over four hundred dollars, four hundred seventy dollars over the goal for the last, last show. So we're excited. And, 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 uh, you know, uh, but, but now it's to your health. And, 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 you know, it's so significant because what we're talking about is restoring your health. And, 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 and Dr. Mir Snyder is our guest and, and he has just done a marvelous job. And, and, and I guess I, Joni introduced me to Dr. Snyder, what, four or five years? Oh, it's way longer than, longer that. than that. Because, you know what, Dr. Watkins, we, Dr. Watkins, Mayor, and I remember when Brother Bay and Dick Gregory oh, yes, came yes, to yes. Westminster Church, and that had to be around 2007. Okay. Uh, so it's been about 10 years. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and, and it's a, been, it's been so, it's so fantastic. And, and, and I, I have a, a, a lovely patient who just lost some weight, looking so fine. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, we, we're so happy to have uh, uh, Dr. Collins here with us today. Coleman. Coleman, Coleman I'm sorry, Marsha Ma- Coleman. Coleman. And, 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 and Marsha came to me. She had glaucoma, mm-hmm. all right? And she was going to the fame, um, John Hopkins, the, the, what is it, Wilmer, Wilmer, Wilmer Institute. The Wilmer Institute, which is supposed to be one of the best eye institutes in the world, right. all right? And, 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 and Marsha, what do they want you to do? Well, I mean, there was a series of things they wanted me to do. First of all, they wanted to do, um, first of all, they wanted to do a series of surgeries. Um, They call them laser, but it really is surgery because what they're doing is scraping the outside of the eye with a laser, and which which, uh, produces scarring of the eye. 
Um, and so essentially the protocol that most people are treated to is they first they try a laser on you, and the laser works for a couple of months, um, some t- usually. And then once the pressure, the eye pressure, what they call the interocular pressure, starts to go up again, then they want to do another laser, although they don't tell you when they start this protocol, that this is essentially the stages that you're going to go through. Yes. You just sort of go through this thing one by one. And um, quite frankly, because you trust your doctor, I think a lot of people don't question when they start putting you on this protocol. They just, you're just supposed to just sort of walk blindly down this path. Literally um, blindly. Literally <laughs> blindly down this path. <laughs> or on your way to blindness. <laughs> and, um, and so the first protocol is the laser. So they scrape your, your, the outside of your eye with the laser. And then once the pressure start going up again within six months to a year, they say, well, you know, it worked, so let's try it again. Um, what they don't tell you is that they usually will not uh, laser your eye three or four times, usually twice is as much as they'll laser. And so then once they laser it the second time, They'll sort of hold your hand and say, you know, I think we have to do invasive surgery. (laughs) (laughs) And so then once they get into the surgery, which is really major surgery, because they're actually going into the eye and they're opening up, um, you know, things in in the eye and it's, you know, you're under anesthesia. At that point, you're on a downward um, uh, trajectory. And so the reason why I was so lucky was because There's I have no a doctor. There's such thing as luck. No, that's right. <laughs> the reason why I'm so blessed was because I have a doctor named Dr. Theodore Watkins. And so when I started hearing all this news, the first place I went to was was you, Dr. Watkins. And I basically said tearfully, this is sort of what the doctors are saying. What do you think I should do? And your response to me was, I have a friend in San Francisco (laughs) 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 named Dr. Mir Schneider. And um, within two to three weeks, if I recall, I was in San Francisco. That's right. I was in San Francisco. And I spent a week in San Francisco um, as a student of Dr. Mir Schneider, one of his clients. And he basically said, you know, if you can possibly help it, do not laser your eye because it's going to, your eye will be scarred up. Uh, and if possible, we're going to avoid the surgery. And so I can report that after two or three years now, <laughs> I've not had a single laser. But it didn't take that, had- it didn't take that long. <clears throat> didn't take that long. No, no. You're doing well two or three years I'm later. Do, I'm doing well two or three. No, the doctors are not even discussing laser with me at this hmm. point. I mean, no one has mentioned laser to me again um, because I, uh, Dr. Schneider was able to develop these exercises that I think are quite amazing. And I do the exercises and my field of vision which is what they test is you know how much peripheral vision you have and, and, and it's so amazing you you had the the um we, we had we had a little get together for for dr snyder at your house yes and, and you showed these yes. pictures yes mm-hmm. where they looked at, at the peripheral vision yes and it was all black it was all black all black yeah on, on on especially on one side on the right side and 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 then you, you, they, when you went back, they weren't ready to do the surgery. You said, no, before you do the surgery, do Let's the do test. Let's do another field of vision, field test, right. And, and, and when you show that, right. it, it was transformed. It was, it was not black anymore. And so literally, we were about to go into, into the laser room uh, to do the laser. And I convinced the doctor um, to allow me to do one more field test before laser. <laughs> um, and, and, and so reluctantly they said, well, we're not sure if your insurance will pay for it. I said, I don't care. I want to do a field test. And we did the field <laughs> test and we came back in and she looked at the field test and she said, Oh, well, maybe we can put off the laser. <laughs> <laughs> and um, as, 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 as I recall, you, you said that they, they, they thought they said that you know the other test must have been uh, a mistake. A mistake, right? Right. <laughs> of course, well, it, it would have been the other test for about two years. That would have been a mistake. Um, and so that was two or three years ago. And literally, I have not had a doctor mention laser to me. Not surgery. I'm not even talking surgery. I have not meant, had a doctor mention laser to me. And so, so the, the point you're saying that it worked. 
It works. <laughs> and oh, no, no, I'm saying it works. So we're going to come back to this in a moment, but just to let you know, those of you who are just joining us for the 2 o'clock hour, we're offering Awakening Your Power of Self-Healing, Mayor Schneider's hot-off-the-press book. You can get it for $100 pledge to your favorite radio station, WPFW, by calling 202-588-9739 or 1-800-222-9739. $100 pledge for getting this magnificent book, Awakening Your Power of Self-Healing. And we are so thankful to Mayor for donating this wonderful book to us. And Mayor, what did you think about Marsha's testimony? Well, of course, it I doesn't think surprise is you. wonderful, <laughs> and I think that she is a great student of mine. In fact, anyone who gets this book and work with it seriously and... You know, again, if you don't have an emergency like Marsha has, and you work on your myopia or nearsightedness or farsightedness, you don't have to spend immediately a lot of time on your book. You you work with the exercise that you can, or if you have uh, glaucoma, then yes, you should really work as intensively as you can and work on the book. But this is what I want to say. Again, patch approach. Um, I will never forget the mother who gave me a call from Israel. I saw her daughter at the age of five months, and she was born with cataracts and had two cataract surgeries on each eye. My kids had good surgeries, but their daughter didn't. And her right eye became completely blind from five retinal detachments, and the left eye, uh, was, was, it was successful. I asked them to not put a prosthesis, but they did put a prosthesis because the doctor said then otherwise the bones would not grow well. And I wanted them to stimulate with light the right eye. And it's important because I like the art of balance. And so what happened was uh, I forgot about the girl, but two years later the mother gives me a call. She says, oops, my girl's eye pressure went up from uh, 16 to 26. Mm. And uh, I said, well, don't start with drops immediately. In two weeks, it was like 30 hours door-to-door trip. The mother, the father, the mother-in-law, uh, and the two girls. I mean, the, the older one was my patient, two and a half years old. The younger one was an hour, a year and a half, came to me. And we spent wonderful time working with the eye that was able to see. But then two weeks later, they measured the pressure, and it still was high. In fact, it went higher by a point to 27. And then I remembered that when I worked with somebody with an enlarged heart, and his beat was 104 beats per minute, and I touched his heart, or his seven rib, and I touched mine, that a very nice nurse who was a student of mine measured our beats and both of our beats became 84 beats per minute. Mm. So the very fact that I touched him and touched myself caused our beats to be exactly at the same speed. Mm. His went up to 92, mine went back down to 72, and his heart learned from mine. There's more about that story, but then I was thinking about her. So I was touching the girl's eye and my eye at the same time. Then I taught the mother to do the same thing, and the father, and then they did something else. They touched uh, the other daughter's eye in her eye. We went to another doctor's appointment with the top ophthalmologist in the world in UCSF. He just came from vacation and made a point to see my patient. And guess what? Her pressure went down to 11. Mm -hmm. So a 10 to 20 considered to be normal pressure unless it's low tension glaucoma where they don't like it to be more than 14. Um, and then uh, 20 to 30 is uh, considered to be high and 30 above considered to be dangerous. But I just want to tell you that story that now she's seven. I met her in Israel a few months ago, and her pressure is normal, and nobody's talking about drops. So we're talking about two and a half to the age of seven right now. And so the point is that the laser treatment is a patch approach. You do the laser treatment, you create a hole, and there's more drainage. 
And guess what? The whole healed. And Marsha is a, a strong woman whose hole would heal very quickly. And then you do a surgery, and that lasts a bit longer, but that also heals. But in the meantime, the eye becomes weaker, and most of the surgeries lead to cataract. And then the cataract grows very quickly. And uh, then they remove the cataract, which causes retinal detachment. And all kinds of So this is a vicious, a vicious cycle. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So the point is, any time that you can either slow it down, block it, or stop it, or do something with it, you're doing a big deal. But also glaucoma is a result of poor blood flow to the optic nerve, Mm -hmm. poor blood flow to the eye that is a big part of the increased pressure, Mm -hmm. and also imbalanced use of the eyes. And that's why the nine principles of working on your vision are so important uh, in working with glaucoma, from relaxation to a peripheral vision to adjustment to different light amplitudes and to and to um, creating balance use within each eye. I think that if you get more blood to the optic nerve, more blood to the eyes, and get balance use within the eye, you can prevent it. And that's why my book is such a book that le- leads people to read everything. For example, if Marsha would have taken my book, I'm willing to bet, the first part she would read is the second part, uh, one of the last chapters, and this is on vision problems, and she would look especially what we say to do with glaucoma. Well, but we refer you back to the vision chapter, and which refers you to the breathing chapter, which refers you to the circulation chapter, to the muscle chapter. Are, are, you, trying to you, say, are you trying to say that, that we're interconnected? <laughs> the exactly. right bone, the left bone's connected to the ankle bone, and all that the way that song goes well, is true. The point is, the blood connects to everything. Respiration connects to everything. You can't tell me I simply have glaucoma. Everything is interconnected, mm. right. and so using the resource of the body is so great. But I'm saying one more thing: when already Marsha can can uh, can control her glaucoma and can do better. She may then be curious to work simply on breathing. She may then be curious to work on circulation. I'm trying to tempt everyone that is reading this book to really seriously, from day one to day 120, to work on their body, to find muscles they never used before, to learn how to increase their circulation. Don't tell me I have glaucoma, I don't have anything else. Don't tell me I have a tumor of cancer, I don't have anything else. You also breathe. You also have circulation. Everything is connected. Everything. Let, let, so me ask you, let, me ask, let me ask you a very practical question. How much time are you suggesting people invest using this book as a guide in themselves each day? Your question is a great question. So let's say that you're not diagnosed with anything. You're not Marsha. You don't have glaucoma. You don't have a stroke like your patient had or your neighbor had, but you basically are breathing and living and your biggest sin is that you live the stressful modern life. Then spend half an hour every day on yourself with the movements that I suggest. Go with the book like a textbook, although it's not a textbook, it's your textbook for your body. Work on your, on your breathing for the first six weeks. Work on your circulation. For the next couple of months, work on your joints. For the next three months, work on your spine. This is something that could be very nice, and each time you're going to find something that you want to keep. So now you do five exercises, and then you do the next five exercises, but you know what? You may do six because you want to keep the one that felt the best for you. Now, throughout the day, don't forget your body. Sometimes you are doing work well, from time to time, walk out and look at the distance. Relax your eyes. So the point is that remember your body throughout the day and invest in it half an hour per day, mm-hmm. unless you have a major problem. When you have a major problem, then yes, you have to, to invest as much as you can. If you cannot do it in your regular days, take a vacation of a week to work on your body, uh, work hard on the weekends. So basically what I'm saying is, Tempt yourself to work on your body because this is something 
that most people don't do. What they do is they go to the gym with a program, and what happens then, they overwork the muscles they always work. In my muscle chapter, I describe the fact that we have more than 640 muscles in our body. And most of us use between 50 and 75 of them. Muscle. Now, some of our muscles will never use, as I was saying this morning. Arthur Rubinstein had muscles that neither me nor anyone in this studio <laughs> will ever use. He had such control in a fine way over his finger. But, <clears throat> and I know that as a body worker and as somebody who read Braille for the beginning of my life, <clears throat> I have such sensitivity that I work with some muscles that others want. But we all could work on ad adapting our body into more and more use of more muscles that we never used before, <laughs> loosening the muscles we always use, breaking connective tissue that we don't need to keep, like as I was talking about lying on tennis balls and other ways to do that, and getting massage, uh, breaking the connective tissue, getting better control of the brain and the central nervous system, and starting to use the body differently. So, you know, when you get the book of Deutsch, which talks about the brain that reinvents itself, it needs to also come with practical suggestions. And whatever you read in many, many more books about the plasticity of the brain, you get in the nervous system chapter of this book. You actually learn how to reinvent yourself in many ways and learn how to use more of yourself rather than less of yourself. And that is what unfortunately modern life teaches us to be basically frozen and degenerate both in the sedentary lifestyle and in the sports activity where you learn to tense your abdomen for everything you do, which eventually leads to arthritis all over the body. So, so this, while, is, this is a, a, a amazing book and, and what you, what I'm, I'm hearing you say is that if we take this book and use it as a guide, we can essentially awakening, have a, an awakening. And, and this book helps to have us, let us have an awakening, your power of self-healing, you know, and, and, we talk about the the issue with 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 uh, insurance and different things. For a hundred dollars, you got an insurance plan that <laughs> lasts you a lifetime. Lasts you a lifetime, <laughs> and that will extend your life. You know, absolutely. So you know, we need to encourage you to to uh, move move your body a little bit. You may only have to pick up your phone and use your fingers, and Mayer encourages to, you to use all parts Using of Using those fingers will improve your health. That's right. 202-588-9739 <laughs> or 1-800-222-9739. We did well. The last hour, we want to do just as well this hour, and we still we have, need... We have, we have two, two anonymous uh, um, uh, pledges, one from, from D.C., $100, and one from Brandy Brandywine, Maryland, one hundred and twenty dollars. But we still need eight, eight more to go. Eight so. more to go. Two zero two five eight eight nine seven three nine or one eight hundred two 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 nine seven three nine. I don't know if we've gotten any pledges on the internet, but let's have some this afternoon. www.wpfwfm.org. And remember, this is a gift. This is a gift to yourself. It's a gift to WPFW, and it can be a gift to your loved ones, friends, and your community. So we have many gifts all rolled into one, thanks to the generosity of Mayer all the way from San Francisco. So uh, really, this is a very important tool for yourself. We all hear, and I know uh, Dr. Watkins, and I also hear people call me every day. They have uh, back aches. They, they're having trouble with an, an asthma attack they were just uh just had a stroke one of my close friends just called me last week and said her husband just had a stroke uh so 
uh, the people, young people, talk about the headaches they have. So these are all universal things that people experience, especially in this society that is so focused on sitting. Sitting, sitting, sitting is the new smoking, they tell us, in the public health community. But many of us who work in public health, guess what we do all day? Sit. We sit. <laughs> you, 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 know, you know, Joni, you mentioned the young people. And, and, you know, I, I do physical exams, sports physicals in some of the high schools in the district. Uh, and, and I see almost 50 percent of the young people with asthma. That's right. All right. 50 percent of asthma. And yet Dr. Snyder talks in this book how to prevent and even treat asthma. Dr. Snyder, you want to say something about that? Absolutely. I want to tell you that uh, twice. I had two of my practitioners giving me a call. They had young kids and said, my son just got an asthma attack and I'm in the emergency room. So I said, okay, the fight is to breathe to your chest. Why won't you massage the son's belly, massage the son's lower back, touch it and ask him to slowly breathe into that area. Warm that area and say, look how pleasant it feels. And they've done it, and the two kids left the emergency room before seeing a doctor because they breathe normally. <laughs> <laughs> and wow. I had the, wait, 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 Dr. Snyder. You had them massage their belly. Yeah. Massage their back. Exactly. And Lower breathe. back especially. Lower back. <laughs> mm -hmm. And breathe. Mm -hmm. And they just left the emergency room. Exactly. Because what happened is, because in the asthma case, often you fight to bring the air in, because of course the biggest problem is exhalation, but then if you don't exhale all the way, um, then it's harder to inhale, very hard to inhale. In fact, we all should know that, that for perfect inhalation, we need to have perfect exhalation. And exhalation should always be slower than inhalation. That's why I suggest to most people to breathe in and out through the nose and to breathe slower through the nose. So. Uh, if I would add to it, there was one lady in England. I was teaching a class uh, in a hospital in London, and the lady says, I have asthma attack. I always use an inhaler. I said, okay, um, let's demonstrate on you. She said, no, I now I breathe well because I just used the inhaler. I said, hey, uh, how can I show how I can get you to breathe? So she said, oh, I'll just run half a block, and when I come back, I'll be wheezing. I said, okay, go do it. We waited and waited and waited. Finally, I had to pick something new. She came back in an hour. She said, your work is too good. It took me 20 blocks to get with it. <laughs> so, so then uh, I got her to bend down and to breathe and to feel the warmth of my hands on her lower back and to breathe to the lower back instead of fighting with the chest. And we put a hot towel on her chest. And guess what? She not only get, uh, stopped her asthma attack, she then took my whole training course in England, became a practitioner of my work in England, and never had an asthma attack since then. Mm -hmm. So the point is not to fight to breathe. The point is to actually relax different parts of the respiratory system because the lungs expand a lot. They expand so much that your lower back can expand. And often... The best thing to do is block one part of your breathing. If every audience that now sits down could bend forward and massage their lower back and breathe into the lower back and do it for just for about five or six breaths, you breathe into your lower back and then you sit up and you can feel that there's more space to breathe both to your abdomen and to your lower back. And of course, then you can increase the space to the sides of your body. So the whole point is don't fight to breathe. Outsmart your your tendency to restrict your respiratory system. You know, then, I, 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 want, I want you all to um, appreciate what you're getting. Mm -hmm. you, you know, uh, I'm, I'm sitting here listening to Dr. Snyder. And, and I want to go out to San Francisco and just <laughs> study under him, <laughs> you know, because I didn't learn this Sunshine. in medical school. You understand what I'm saying? This is some deep stuff. 
You know what? You know what I would say is that a hundred dollars is so cheap for, I mean, it's for, for for the kind of information we're getting. I mean, like you're right. I mean, I went to San Francisco and spent a couple a thousand dollars or something for the information that you're going to get in a book for one hundred. Dollars. I mean, it really is the best bargain on, you know, in stores on the planet. On the planet. And one of the things that I did want to say is that I, even though there are a lot of exercises, there's something very practical about these exercises that you begin to really integrate these exercises into your daily life. Absolutely. See, I, I think one of the problems, uh, Doc, is is that it's too simple. <laughs> you know, we're so used to, you know, sticking a needle in our eye or yes. opening the chest. I, I remember when I was in surgery, one of the proud, proudest days, I was on call at D.C. General, and somebody had a gunshot wound to the chest, and, and I ran in in the emergency room and opened the chest right there in the emergency room, you know, and went, went down and grabbed the heart and tried to say, God died anyway, but the point was mm. it was dramatic, mm -hmm. you know, right. and it was re re memorable. What we're talking about is something simple, simple. right? But that works. But, but it, something that you can integrate, like when I wake up in the morning, um, Dr. Schneider talks about how important the sun is. Yes, I mean, so in our culture, the sun. We're trying right. to avoid the sun because. <laughs> You know, in this sort of European culture, nobody wants to get dark or you don't want to be exposed to the sun because of this or that. Well, actually, in Dr. Schneider's uh, wow. protocol, we actually wake up in the morning and we sun and we allow the sun, all the vitamins and everything that the sun has to give. But you that's so expensive. Oh, it's so expensive. <laughs> you you gotta go. And who's profiting? Yeah. Making the yeah, point the about, the value of this, much, no. about the, what the value of this is and how this value is unappreciated. Yes. And that brings us to the point of fundraising for the radio station. We're people are calling in and making contributions and uh, we're happy for those and uh, there are some people to thank but this program that you get not only does it give you life more abundantly but longer life yes. and that is something that how valuable is that and uh, how much can you give to uh, how much would you pay for longer life and more enjoyment in your life Please make a contribution. Get this power of self-healing, awakening the power of self-healing with a contribution of $100. Give a contribution. The, the information that you get just listening to the program here on WPFW with Dr. Watkins is worth a $100 contribution if there were no thank you gift involved. But please make a contribution. Give to support the radio I, station I dare now. Say, I dare say that it's worth thousands of dollars. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. You, you know, one, one of the things, and, 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 and this is the truth. <laughs> easily, easily. This is the truth. One of the things that frustrates me is, is that we're so cheap, you know. True. Uh, when it comes to ourselves and our health, mm -hmm. and yet we'll go spend thousands of dollars on a TV set, mm -hmm. or, or or on a, a new on, phone, a, a phone. A I mean, I mean, wait, <laughs> wait in line for hours right. in the cold to get a phone, <laughs> and won't spend a hundred dollars right. on yourself. Right. There, there's there's something wrong. I mean, it's like we need to get a psychiatrist here to evaluate. What's happening? But fortunately, that's not true of everybody, because Roslyn and and and, and um, Virginia, Arlington, Virginia, she doesn't think that way. Thanks, Roslyn. Thank Dolores, you. Thank you, Roslyn. So, thanks, Dolores. You know, uh, and DC doesn't think that way, and, and a number of anonymous folk uh, in DC and in Virginia, uh, in Suitland, Maryland. Silver Springs, they don't think that way, and they've made contributions. And now we just need three more to to get the minimum goal. But I, I'll just tell you, I would like to see us in the next thirty minutes double our goal. Yes, mm -hmm. you know, instead of getting a thousand, I want to see us get two thousand. That's right. Because because if we do that, then the theme of this program to your health. The theme of this program is, is, is to your health. And when we make this contribution, all right, 
and another another anonymous person has just come through. Thank you. You know, when we make this contribution, what we're doing is that we are making a contribution to, to our ourselves. health. That's right. To ourselves. The and to the our families. The number and to call. The family. And the families. And the number to call is 202-588-9739. 1-800-222-9739. Go online, wpfwfm.org, but contribute now. You know it's the right thing to do. Don't wait another second. Only $200 to reach that goal, but then we've got 30 minutes left. We're going to double the we goal. We're going to double the goal. We're going to double the goal. I All believe now. we can do it because yes. because it is it is a value and we are awakening today. <laughs> yes. We got Sandra just... from Laurel just made a, a, another contribution. So we 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 it's coming through, and I, I want to also say WPFW in general is good for your health, and it does a lot of our hearts good to see and hear Askia Muhammad, who's yes. just got lots of accolades and deserves many more. Askia alone uh, can can improve your health. <laughs> Sandra, is, 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 Sandra is, is new, and we've got the thousand, and we're a hundred over now. Uh, Ba- Barbara, nine hundred so we, more we, to we, go. We, nine hundred more to go for our new, our, our, our new goal. double goal, and we and we're going to do it today nine, seven, because three, it is in your interest right. as well as in the interest of the station, and so I'm excited, you know. Well, not only that, but when you have a sick family member, the whole family is involved in this. Particularly, I want to say, if you're a mother or if you're a father, but your children, everyone gets involved in this. So it's important that you take care of yourself so that you don't have to have the whole family um, sort of, you know, dealing with your health issues. And we have to take care of our communities. And and Dr. Watkins, I must say, I'm still continuing to be sickened by the, the rates of chronic illness in our community in Washington. In D.C., especially east of the river, it's heartbreaking, just heartbreaking that we have some of the highest rates of kidney disease alone in the world. And maybe we, we want to make sure we spend a few moments on hyper, hypertension. Hypertension is the number one cause of death and disability in the world. Let me say that again. Because, see, I, I know very few people that are not on hypertensive medicines. Mm. That's true. I know very few people who are not on hypertensive medicines. And yet it is a preventable and a reversible disease. It is the number one cause of death and disability in the world. And this Mm. is not my opinion. This is, the research is showing this. Dr. Snyder, what can we do? And what does your book teach us to do to prevent and reverse hypertension? And we want to thank Don, we want to think uh, uh, of D.C. We want to thank Barbara of D.C. We want we want to thank Cecilia of White Plains, New York. No, well, it's actually no. White oh, Maryland. Plains, Maryland. Okay, okay. But but somebody <laughs> from New York's on the call. Yeah, let's let's hear it from <laughs> New York too. Yes. Okay, so well, hi, what so, can we do, Doctor Snyder? So I'm I'm so happy that we're talking about that topic. Truth of the matter is, first of all, if you have hypertension, you need to meet Doctor Watkins. Yes. Because you really need to change your diet. Uh, too many people eat prepared food. It is nice. Sometimes I eat it myself when I'm in a hurry between patients. But my God, I don't eat much of it. And it's so important that you make your own food and don't saturate it with an amazing amount of sodium. Put a little bit of salt here and there for the taste. But, sea salt. But sea salt is the best. And don't kill yourself with a lot of sodium. That's number one. That's, that's Dr. Watkins' specialty, and he will have many shows about that. For me, from my perspective, and by the way, I agree with it 100%. You should work on it now. For me, the most important thing for you to do is to um, work on bringing more blood to your hands and feet. So mm-hmm. one of the exercises I suggested, if your shoulders do not have a big problem, is to lift the arms very quickly up and down and to open the hands when they're, da- when they're up and close uh, the fist when it's down. So you lift the arms up and down. You can stand against the wall, and as long as you don't hit your arms hard on the door or on the wall, go up and down, up and down, up and down for about 100 times at a time and 500 times in a day. And we found, we actually measured, that the uh, systolic 
uh, pressure went down big time, um, and then the diastolic went down moderately doing this particular exercise. One important thing that I want to say that Dr. Watkins said, he said that the exercises are simple. And that's a big Jewish adage one said, the truth is simple, but the way to it is full of obstacles. All right. So the first <laughs> obstacle the first obstacle is believing that yes. it's complicated. It isn't. Give up on your coffee if you can. Give up on no, 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 no. Words are so important. Give up on your coffee, period. Exactly. <laughs> and what about the sugar, too? The sugar, give up on that. And exactly. the grease and the and unhealthy poisons that we eat. Exactly. And give up on your doctor as soon as you can about things like this. Unless you have a kidney situation that doesn't allow the blood to flow, that's where the doctors can help, which is a small, small percentage, not even... Half of one percent of the patients. But there, there are things that we can even do for the kidneys. But that, right. that, that's another show. <laughs> but, but the thing is, work on better blood flow. Take walks. Even now, in the cold of winter, wear very good clothes and take a walk. But the main thing is that exercise of lifting the arms up and down. And then you can do a, a continuation of that exercise where you lift the arm right arm up and the left leg up and then you re- lift the left arm up and the right leg up and you jump one after the other and you're going to find that that leads to much more circulation i bounce a lot on the trampoline uh near my home of course i have the luxury of living in good weather in that sense and i have it in my home and we have it at the school and i really enjoy the kind of blood that rushes and that opens all the obstacles within your vascular system, and it's easier for the blood to flow. You can definitely reduce your blood pressure. Now, if you do have low blood pressure, it's very important that you take cold showers if you can handle it, and then if you can, take lukewarm showers. And you, you, can, all, you, can, all, you can actually work up. You know, uh, you can start with 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 tepid water, and then then you know your body will adjust so that you can get to that cold. And it's very important to drink a lot of fluids, especially water, if you have a low blood pressure, and especially before you sit in a hot bath because you could definitely become dizzy. And many people with low blood pressure all of a sudden fall uh, because they become unconscious for. 10 seconds or so. And so it's so important to increase, even by a small amount, the low blood pressure that you have. And of course, massaging your body is something that is helpful to both. It regulates your blood pressure beautifully. If you warm up your skin, just about four minutes to five minutes before you go to sleep, you massage in rotating motion, uh, your arm, your legs, your abdomen, and then you interlace your fingers and massage your lower back. That makes a big difference. But again, for the high blood pressure, lifting the arms up and down for 100 times at a time could make a huge difference. I measured it. A nurse and a physiotherapist measured it in one of my <laughs> classes. And 30 people have had definite reduction in the pressure for that moment. Do it enough times, and it's going to go down. And it's Another thing which is and very now, now, are, are we are we are we saying that we can actually if we if we do this on a regular basis that we can have a sustained drop in our blood pressure exactly and, 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 and possibly even get off some of these medication and it's very important to get off the medication. I tell you what's wrong with the medications is how unbalanced things can be. Like mm-hmm. if you have a very high blood pressure and you take medication and you reduce your blood pressure. Sometimes that's the problem itself because one of the biggest beliefs I have is in homeostasis. And when you take away the state of the body to another state, sometimes it, it, it um, affects the body adversely. And that's why I'm a believer in slow and gradual decrease of medication, but then eventual elimination of the medications to reduce blood pressure because I think that you should be able to do it yourself you should do it slowly and gradually. And well, you, you know, you're, you're making a, such an important point, you know, this homeostasis thing. The blood pressure is high because of, 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 of some 
problems in the system. And just taking blood pressure medicine does nothing. Just coming off the medicine does nothing. You have to, you know, I tell people doing nothing is not a treatment plan. You have to start doing these exercises. You have to start eating right. You have to start thinking different so that the problem is corrected and you no longer need medication. And may you know, I wish you could... You know what Mark Twain once said? I've encountered many problems in my life, most that have never happened. <laughs> people are worried about everything. I mean, some things are worth worth uh, worrying about, especially the kid that we have in the White House these days. But mm-hmm. never do that. Yeah, and I wish, Mayor, you could see in the studio our beautiful Gloria Minot and all of us sitting so here reaching, Mayor, reaching uh, and uh, holding dance. up our hands, and we could make this into a new movement we could. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and really help to decrease blood pressure. But what do you have to say, Gloria? Well, I am just here to remind folks on the phones that have been ringing off the hook that the book, Mayor Schneider's Awakening the Power of Self-Healing for $100, they are, I mean, going off the shelf. So don't be left out. Give us a call at 202-588-9739 or 1-800-222. 9739 on the web wpfwfm.org that's all you have to do it takes less than a minute or two and you're just done just call us make that pledge of support and we really really appreciate it and i'm telling you i'm going to be doing those um yes uh, you know, I, I, we and, and i i am we too i mean i'm going to i'm going to do it and i'm going to be teaching my patients i mean i yes. think i think this thing is just it's just amazing you know Something so simple that can make such a profound Absolutely. difference. Yes. And, and, and today we're having an awakening. Yes. yes. All right. Yes. You know. Uh, uh, you know. I'm. I'm so happy that that I'm doing this because I'm going to do it. I'm going to teach it to my wife and. Trust me. Yes. My wife's going to do it. (laughs) (laughs) And you know, Dr. And I'm going to teach my children. Yes. And my, I'm going to start my little grandkids on this. Well, you see, my grandkids have a trampoline, so I can, I can go on their trampoline and jump, you know, so that is, that is really, really good to know. But talking about lifting up your arms above your head, Dr. Watkins, it reminds me, and some of us remember the 1970s when there was a big movement to get your blood pressure checked. And it was part of the, the Black Panther movement yes, to actually yes. go. In. Well, we could create a new movement to yes. be lifting our yes. arms. Uh, 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 and, we, <laughs> and we can use WPFW, Gloria, oh, we to can. get everybody that's right, that's right, to can. lift up their Every, arms yes. and because to reduce. Because hypertension, yeah. it, you know, we used to talk about it. We don't talk about hypertension that's anymore. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hypertension is still killing folks. Yeah, yeah, all right? Yeah, the it number is. One it's killer. still killing people. Right. But we aren't saying anything about it. It's like. We have fallen asleep, but today, thanks to Dr. Snyder, we are awakening. We are awakening. Yes. Yes. Oh. Now, this is we just need two hundred dollars. Two more people pledging, and we will have doubled our goal. We want and to thank a- James. Yay! Uh, James from Baltimore. All right. Yay! Be more. We want to thank Michael from uh, Springfield. We want to thank um, an anonymous person from D.C. Um, is this uh, Ma- Mazi? Uh, Mazi. Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. From 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 um, uh, Maryland, Cambridge, Maryland, and um, where are you? Two zero two five eight eight nine seven three nine one eight hundred. Roderick from DC. Yes, Roderick. And, and Rod- we want to thank Anne from Fort Washington. She called and made a pleasure of support. So thank you. Yay! Uh, thank you, Anne. Okay, we're, so, we're, so we, we, we that, that, that's it. That's, that's it. it. I think okay, we, we I can think still we, bring in a few more. Awakening your power of self healing. <laughs> this wonderful new book, hot off the press, by Mayer Schneider and Mayer. For those of you who are new to PFW, is a pioneer in holistic health. Uh, he's been on the airwaves with us for about 10 years. Uh, very much loved by our own Dick Gregory, uh, went to many of his workshops and uh, took off his shoes and socks and walked backwards with Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, see, Mayor does these simple little exercises, but they make a difference. I, I remember at, at Marsha's house, he had us to do some things with our eyes, right. you know, right. and, 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 and then open the eyes and you can see clearer i mean it's just you know he cut the lights out Mm -hmm. you know he cut the lights out in the house and had us do these simple exercises this this brother is brilliant all right right. and he 
put all this information in this book. Right. And all we have to do is get on the telephone. Just call 202-588-9739. The toll-free number, 1-800-222-9739. The website, wpfwfm.org. For a pledge of $100 on your Visa, MasterCard, American Express, or Discover, you can get Mayor Schneider's Awakening... Your power. your power of self healing. Yeah. Yay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. So one important thing that I want to say, Doctor Watkins, you really mentioned something very important. The doctors are no longer talking about high blood pressure. Why? Because they have the medications for yes. it. And thank you for not selling medications to your clients. Yes. Because doctors make a lot of money meeting the pharmaceutical companies and helping people get medications that can really ruin them long term. Wow. The uh, second thing, you don't need to do anything about your eyes. They're glasses. I think it's about time to say medications, glasses, glasses, braces. It is time to think about the power of the body to get better. You may need your glasses, but you may need lower prescription. Okay. You may not need them. You may need medication for now, but not for later. And that's what my book is about. Oh, and yeah. and we also, we agree with you. We want to talk about the power of the people, though, too, because back in the 70s, it wasn't the doctors that were talking that much about um, getting your blood pressure checked. It was the Black Panthers. It was a movement mm-hmm. that everybody, and I remember I was in an organization called Medical Committee for Human Rights. We gave people those, what do you call them, Dr. Watkins? So that we taught people how to use those the, the blood, blood pressure, pressure of- uh Gauges. gauges to measure your blood pressure. It was a movement. So we need to bring back the movement for your health, and we can start with the simple arm lifting. But we also need to start with strengthening WPFW. Yes. And, and we're doing it. We want to thank John from 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 Falls Church, uh, a new uh, a new. Uh, uh, member. First member. Okay. member. We have someone anonymous for for um, Columbia. Um, I forgot to, to, to ring when we were talking about, is that Ma- Marie? Marie? Marie. Uh, okay. Yay. Marie was new. Another anonymous is new. Wonderful. Uh, uh, who's this? Uh, LaVonda. La okay. LaVonda. Yay. An- another Part of the I mean, big anonymous family. We're $1,200 <laughs> $1, over. $1,200 over. I think, over. I think we got, we got um, ten, 10 minutes. You do uh, have 10 we minutes. Can t- Yes, another we can, we can tri- anonymous. We can triple this. Uh, yes, you know. and this is for you. This is for your health. This is for the community's health. This is for yourselves, for your families, for your loved ones. And only on WPFW can we get this magnificent gift awakening your power of self. Your power, your ah, power, and it's there. See, okay, you know, your power. An- another yeah, anonymous. To, yes, you know. Now, I had it wrong. Yeah, yeah, Not okay, the power, okay. your power oh, wait, of self healing. One hundred dollar pledge, one hundred dollar gift. It's Valentine's uh, month. It's Heart Health Month. It's Black Love Month. It's Black History Month. And all of this can be yours for a gift of awakening your power of self healing. You know, you mentioned Black History. The, the, the reality is, is that you know the system didn't do it. You know, we didn't wait on Congress to do it. The community did it. We came together, blacks, whites. In the 70s. In, in the 70s. The, right. and, 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 and we did something. Joni, you're absolutely cor- correct. We as a community must, must take it. charge our of our community. We must awaken ourselves. Call in. Make a pledge. Do something for you and you know, for your family. It's, it's, it's tremendous. I mean. Yeah. So let's give some numbers. 202-588-9739. Toll free. 1-800-222-9739. The website. WPFWFM.org. And you can put your pledge on Visa, MasterCard, American Express. Call us. Discover. Call us. Make that pledge of support. What are you ringing the bell for uh, now? Uh, <laughs> He's ringing it for the uh, listeners. Uh, uh, We're uh, still uh, calling. From from from, from <laughs> Landover, you know. Yay! Um, Let's hear from more La- from Virginia. Geraldine, Geraldine from, Lanham. from Lanham. Okay. All right. Yes. Let's you hear know, some I mean, from West Virginia. And Geraldine is new, also. All right. Yay. Archie from Archie Annapolis. From Annapolis. Okay. Yay! All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's exciting here. We and we. St- 
We still we still got eight minutes. Yeah. All right, but, yeah. but 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 <laughs> triple the goal. I, I, but I, we can do it. But I tell you what, while I'm giving you the number again, let's hear some some words from Dr. Schneider before we wrap up here. Two zero two five eight eight nine seven three nine one eight hundred two 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 nine seven three nine. The website wpfwfm dot org. Dr. Schneider, I want to tell you that Marsha and uh, Dr. Watkins and Johnny are some of my best friends ever. <laughs> All and, right. that, um, and that I'm so happy, you know, we ourselves are non-profit, and we are so happy to be the best friends of WPFW right here from San Francisco, but we also have a non-profit in Brazil and in Israel and in England, and we really feel strong about your radio station and we really are grateful to the fact that you are starting to help us to create the movement. We need a revolution in the world mm. without flags, without politics, without anything at home, in your living room. Improve your health. And then like the 100 monkeys, uh, like, uh, the concept by improving your health, improve everyone else in your community. And especially since in this book we're talking about support groups. Learn that you can get rid of your glasses and see better. Learn that you can uh, overcome your macular degeneration. Learn that you can overcome your multiple sclerosis. And learn that you c can prevent all those problems and also be alive. You know, uh, Thich Khan was asked the question, you know, a Vietnamese uh, priest, yes. uh, Buddhist priest, uh, why are we here? And he asked the person, are you here? And so the point is, be present in your body. This is what my book is about. Well, okay. well, we want to we want to just thank you, and and we want to say that we've gotten over fifteen hundred dollars above over our goal. Our goal. Yeah. And, and the, the phones, phones are, are still, still ringing. ringing. Yeah. I, I, I they want ring for the I want you to know that we have had an awakening today. Yes. All right. Exactly. And it's and, and it's and it's it's not going to end today. No. It no. started today, but it's it's going to go. I want to thank uh, Dr. Coleman. I want to. Joni, we got to do this again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> working will. with Joni today, th this has been really exciting. Dr. Snyder, it's been such a pleasure. Thank you, Mier. Uh, and thank and, and, you and for we want to thank book, all of our, our, our listeners uh, and supporters of this station. This is Dr. Theodore Watkins and Joni Eisenberg. And this has been To Your Health. God bless. We're going to see you again next week. Rosemary in the bag tied around my knee. Good afternoon and welcome to WPFW's Headline News. I'm Darnia Samuels. Here are your stories for the 3 o'clock hour. Millions of fans watched Super Bowl 52 last night, but before the Eagles won the exciting game, Patriots receiver Brandon Cooks had to leave the game in the second quarter due to a blindside hit that resulted in a head injury. That calls to mind the several cases of chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE, that have been found in now-deceased NFL players. And a few months ago, Boston University's CTE Center conducted a study that shows that children who began playing tackle football before age 12 experienced emotional and behavioral issues at higher rates later in life than those who did not. Years before, this center also found that players exposed to tackle football before age 12 were more likely to display later life cognitive impairment. Armed with this evidence, Maryland State Delegate Terry Hill has drafted a new measure that would prohibit the Maryland State Board of Education from approving tackle football programs for children under the age of 14 and requiring those 14 and up who want to play to take a course explaining the risks associated with concussions and brain injury. It would also include provisions against heading moves in soccer and checking in lacrosse for kids under the age of 14. Ms. Hill, who worked in medicine, including plastic surgery, before politics, said of her drafted bill, and I quote, I love having young people participate in sports. I'm not trying to stop that. I'm trying to make it as safe for their lives long term as possible, end quote. The bill is expected to be finalized before Friday. In music news, soul man Dennis Edwards has passed away. The former Temptations lead singer died at age 74 last Thursday in a Chicago hospital, just two days before his 75th birthday. 
Edwards had been ill from meningitis, according to his wife, Brenda. The gritty voice singer was with the Temptations for parts of three decades, the 1960s, 70s, and 80s, and his tenure with the group started in 1968 when Edwards, who had been part of another Motown male group, the Contours, replaced David Ruffin, who was a friend of his. Edwards' entrance into the group ushered in a new era for the Temptations as he sang lead on their psychedelic soul hits like Cloud Nine, which won Motown its first Grammy, I Can't Get Next to You, and Papa Was a Rolling Stone. As a solo artist, Dennis Edwards' biggest success came in 1984 with Don't Look Any Further, a duet with noted songwriter Saida Garrett. In that decade, Edwards performed with David Ruffin and Eddie Kendrick as a group of their own, singing Temptations hits. In 1989, the year that Edwards departed the Temptations for good, he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as a member of the group. And for the last two decades, he led his own splinter group, the Temptations Review, featuring Dennis.